Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Uh, in our previous tutorial, we were able to add files and uh, add our project, put our project under version control. And in this particular tutorial, we are going to look at how to in, uh, create the Docker configuration or you know uh, set our project to be uh, running on Docker. So I won't go into the details of what is Docker uh you know how to install docker and the those details but i'm going to share a link whereby you can read uh, the docker documentation and uh, look at how uh, we are going around all these things so what i can maybe explain in a nutshell is that instead of us installing postgres because i want us to i want this project to be using postgres which is normally what is used in a production environment rather than these DBSQLite, these SQLite 3 database. So which is, uh, you know, it cannot be scaled to a production environment. So we are going to use Postgres. And uh, I do not want to download Postgres and install it as a separate application or as a full-blown application, as we call it. So that's why you're using Docker. So we'll use Docker, which uh, will... Uh, uh, pull a Postgres image and also pull a Python image and Django will run inside this container together with Python in one container and uh, Postgres will run into in another container and these two containers will be communicating. Yeah, So that is a concept that we are trying to bring into uh, in this tutorial. So my first uh, step will be creating the uh, what you call the Docker file and i'll uh, just uh, it should be inside this uh, project folder so i'll call my file docker file so take note of the capital letter d the first and it's only called it's just called a docker file is no dot txt or dot whatever so i'll add it there and i'll also add it inside the put it under version control this is a good thing about PyCharm. it is asking if you want to put it under version control so you can either cancel or accept so i'll just click add and uh, this file kind of highlights the images that are going to be pulled from the docker hub there is a website called docker hub and in this file in this case what i'm, I'm just going to pull the python image only and probably do some commands you can also write some commands uh, that uh, do procedures like uh, in uh, Linux. So let me first of all refer to Docker Hub. I had already opened uh, these uh, the Python image in Docker, and uh, you can see you can if you want to use Python, you can use the Docker pull command and pull the Python uh, image and uh, use it for maybe a particular test or a particular case, or if you want to develop some software based on Python. So then uh, I'm interested in the Python 3.8 and uh, it comes in different flavors. It comes with these, like this one is Slim Buster, Bulls, Bullseye. All these are versions of uh, Debian, yeah, uh, Debian operating system. So there's also Alpine, which is a small, you notice that images for Alpine are very small. Uh, however, I'm not going to use this Alpine. I'm going to use the one for Bullseye since it's the one that I've tested and it is working in my uh, setup. So I'll just go back, I can copy, I just want to copy the this the name or the text only, I don't want the docker pool. So in this docker file, I'm, I'm going to add some comments there, at least to guide us uh, through. So I'll pull the base image. Normally this is the procedure, standard procedure that is used. Uh, base image and uh, this image is uh, uh, the first most docker files that you're going to see probably all i'm not sure but i think most of them are you'll have this from command you can see even the id is highlight is uh, auto completing that so i'll add from python and the particular python that we are talking about is just paste this let me remove this python so it, it's going to pull this from the Docker Hub, Python version 3.8, since it's the one I'm using. So let me refer you to this pip file. You remember that we are using Python 3.8. So if you're using 3.10 or 3. something else, then you need to at very least ensure that it is you put the 
correct version of Python. Otherwise, uh, these people may complain uh, later. Yeah, so we have a base image. And uh, after we have pulled it, there are two environment variables that are normally used in uh, Python with Python images. Uh, so we have Python uh, don't write bytecode. Then we'll add a one and explain what this uh, what this means. We also have another environment variable, and you'll notice that the environment variable we are starting with an env prefix. So we have Python buffered buffered. Actually, it's Python unbuffered. And then we'll put a one there, and then we'll. No the next step is uh, pointing, telling Docker which will be our working directory. Yeah. So our working directory, I'll just put a comment there. And then the working directory will be inside now the container. It's not inside our computer. Our computer is what you call the host machine. But you are going to create a container. You are going to create a container that runs our application. So where is it going to be stored? Stored. It is a Linux container, so where is it going to be stored? So we need to tell the Docker to refer to that place, and we have a command that is called workdir, workdir, which is, uh, uh, and then we we'll add the name of the directory, and in this case, I'll just call my directory website. You can call it whatever you want. Some call it code, others call it something else. Now, the third step will be installing our dependencies. Dependencies, and these are uh, we are going to use. That's why we have pipen. That's where we are going to use it in installing all this. But before installing it, we have the copy command. We will need to copy this folder and its files inside that container. So we need to copy. What are we copying? So first of all, we are going to copy the pip file. And then we're going to copy pip file dot lock yeah. inside the working directory, which is web site. So after we have copied these, then we are going to continue with running. We are going to run the pip install uh, pipenv, and then we are going to add this the two ampersand as a kind of concatenate uh, commands inside Linux. So if you need to understand these, you may have to look at uh, Linux. Uh, and uh, we have pipen install system. So this ensures that we, it installs the, let me just run pip lists. So it ensures that it installs all these packages that we have even from the system because if we do not do that, then there may be conflicts between the pip file dot lock and uh, you know it will give us some errors. So instead of you know going through that route, we it's good that we run also this pip and we install a system. So it will install also the system based uh, packages. Uh, you know, uh, in that environment. So the next step is copy. We are going to copy now the rest of the uh, project. And, uh, directories. Now we are going to repeat the copy command. And then in this case, we are going to copy the current folder into the website folder that we created. So this summarizes our Docker file. It's not big uh, because only the only requirement, major requirement we need is Python. Because through Python and pip, uh, we can or pip and we can install uh, the dependencies like Django or something else that we need to use. So as I have mentioned, this from tells Docker file to pull this from uh, to pull this Python image for Python 3.8.13. Uh, the running on uh, Debian Buster image, and uh, we have two environment variables that 
we are going to add we have these that we have added that is it's python don't write bytecode so whenever you execute python files you'll notice that it usually creates those the dot pyc the compiled files uh, so those files are not uh, actually they even if, even when you look at the git ignore they are not they're usually ignored because uh, one thing I can say because I've ever analyzed one of them is that it shows there. It kind of exposes your machine and uh, they're not required. So that's why we are adding. And this dot one is a Boolean value, which states uh, don't write the bytecode at true to true. Then we have Python and buffered. So we do not want to use a buffered Python uh, uh, setup. So we are also setting this value into. Uh, true, but you can check on this because um, my explanation may not be sufficient enough for explaining this. But if you look at many uh, Docker files that come with this, they have this Python and buffered. And then we have the working directory. So we tell Docker into which directory it should, uh, which is the working directory that we are referring to. Then the third or the second last step is installing the dependencies using pipenv. Or maybe in your case, if you are using virtual end, it's more or less the same. There's no problem. You will just change this pipen with virtual end. Or uh, if you're using poetry, probably and others. So we have copy. The, the final step is copying the files. Now it copies all these uh, project directory and the app directory and these other files like the managed py. So this this summarizes our Docker uh, Docker file and what it constitutes and uh, the next step we are going to look at is uh, uh, the docker we are going to create the docker compose file so we are going to uh, stop our tutorial at this point and uh, we are going to look at uh, in the next step we are going to look at how our docker compose file is going to look like and in the end all these things are going to make sense so if you like this tutorial and my other tutorials, please like my uh, videos, uh, share my videos, and you can also add a comment if you have any queries. And uh, finally, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thank you for watching.